We got a pretty packed episode for you guys. Welcome to Setup Warriors episode 316 Ultimate Edition. That's right, I'm bringing it back. So slap that like button if you're excited and let the Setup Wars begin. Let me show you guys the difference between regular shoes and waterproof shoes. So the shoe on my right is from Vessi, who's also sponsoring today's video. Not only does it keep my feet dry in wet circumstances, but it's extremely comfortable to wear. And that's because all Vessi shoes are made out of Dymatex. It's a dual climate knit material that keeps you cool in the summer and warm in cold weather. These shoes are now a part of my daily life. They're stylish, so they fit with pretty much any outfit I own, and they are so comfortable that I wear them practically everywhere I go, whether it's running errands, taking my daughter out, or just chilling in my backyard. And I know you guys will love these shoes as well. In fact, Vessi is giving all my subscribers a $25 discount on each pair of adult Vessi shoes. If you guys wanna grab one, visit vessi.com slash techsource and use the code techsource. Kicking off the episode is a decked out gaming room by Carlos, who's a construction project executive from New York. Now it took him a total of four years to complete the setup for gaming and editing, and it's actually split into three areas. We got the console slash entertainment area on the left with the main gaming and editing setup in the middle, followed by a compact laptop setup for work right next to him. He designed the setup so that he can be in the center of it all. All he has to do is rotate his chair to transition between both setups, and this was made possible by the desk layout. He's rocking an IKEA mom desk with a pullout drawer, which he extended by adding an extra Alex unit on the side. The main monitor is the 49 inch Super Ultrawide from Alienware, but he did stack another 34 inch Ultrawide up top for multitasking. Below that, we got the ROG Strix Scope keyboard paired with an M6 65 RGB Elite mouse with very clean cable routing. Look at the way he used cable clips to keep a straight path into the two grommets he made in the desk. Such a clean job. Also, nice mod on the Elgato Stream Deck. Looks like he skinned the outer bezel in white to match the color scheme. Unfortunately, when you have such large monitors and not enough surface area, things tend to get blocked, like his speakers in the back. If you don't want to lay them sideways, you can always mount them on the wall and have them tilt towards you. Aside from the speakers, he does own a pair of Corsair Virtuosos that he keeps next to him and a pretty sweet streaming setup as well, which I want to go over real quick. I think it's really cool how he made all the streaming gear fit so comfortably. Starting with the webcam, which he clamped to the top wall shelf. Moving over to the boom arm and mic combo, looks like instead of clamping it to the edge of the desk, he used a grommet approach and drilled through the desk. That way he can swivel the arm freely. He also picked up a laptop stand for the Go XLR, which gives him more adjustability, and it can also hold a controller at the same time. He definitely optimized the setup to make great use of the limited space he has. No complaints when it comes to cable management, everything does seem to be nicely contained underneath the desk. And finally, powering the main setup is a nice custom water cooled build inside the IQ5000T. Just look at those bands though, that is some very impressive work. He was also able to fit in a distro plate with a custom GPU sag bracket that has a built in LCD display for temps and this is actually the first time I'm seeing that. Apparently he bought this from Etsy. The specs are also impressive. It wouldn't be an ultimate edition without an RTX 3090 or higher now would it? He's also got a 12900K in here with 64 gigs of RAM. This is actually Carlos's third rig within four years. His first PC was also water cooled and so was his second. A very nice upgrade over the past four years. Thank you Carlos for starting off the show. Our next guest is Chris, who's here to show off his epic man cave, packed with four complete setups. He's got it all, a PC gaming setup right beside a secondary workstation and a fully decked out racing sim in the corner. And then right behind all that is a console setup that he also uses to kick back and watch movies on. So what does he do for a living, you might ask? Well, he's a junior software developer from Australia and it took him four years to save up for all these parts and only four months to put it all together. The main setup is where he spends most of his time, considering it's his work from home setup as well. He's using a 49 inch super ultra wide as the main monitor, but also added an iPad Air on a boom arm as a supplemental display. For audio, he's got a Katana V2 soundbar for the main setup and a Samsung soundbar for the console setup. It's a pretty stacked setup, by the way. He's got pretty much all the new consoles here, except the Series X. Now the third audio system is actually equipped with his racing sim setup, featuring the RC N1 racing cockpit. 
He's getting that 5.1 surround sound experience from the Logitech Z906 speakers. My guy is getting that true immersive experience with his fully decked out Fnatic Racing Sim setup. We've got the V3 pedals, gear shifter, handbrake, and three different Fnatic wheels. Basically one for each type of game he's playing. Speaking of gaming, looks like he plays on another 49 inch CRG9 from Samsung. Both the main setup and the racing sim are powered by his custom PC featuring the Ryzen 9 3900X and the colorful RTX 30. ADTI. I'm not gonna lie though, the 240mm AIO looks out of place in that build and I would have put the Wi-Fi extender on the outside of the case. This is a pretty badass man cave, I'm not gonna lie. I'm digging the RGB lighting, I love the superhero posters and collectibles you have against the wall. There's a lot of personality here, that's for sure. I just would have worked on the cable management a little bit more, you know, maybe router the wires in the PC another way and use Velcro straps on the cables behind the monitor and the PC to prevent them from flaring. But all in all, I'm very impressed. Thank you for sharing this badass man cave with us. We're not slowing down anytime soon, ladies and gents. Up next is a very clean Alienware theme setup. Now I thought I was meticulous about my white theme setup. Turns out Christopher is just as dedicated. So he's an antiquarian from California who built this setup in just one month for mostly work and casual gaming. He does everything on a single 38 inch ultrawide from Alienware that he mounted to the autonomous smart desk and notice how the monitor mount is also in white. I mean everything in this setup is white. The mug, the coaster, the spaceship, figurines, this man is committed. The only thing that isn't white is the mouse pad, which adds a nice contrast between the peripherals and the desk. Moving on to audio, he's got a pair of Audio Engine A2 Plus speakers for the primary source, but for gaming, the AW510s are his go-to. It makes me so happy to see such clean cable work on the sit and stand desk, and overall just a very clean setup. You've done such a good job keeping things nicely organized. It's really cool to see how loyal you are to a brand. I personally don't have anything against uh, Alienware peripherals or monitors, but their PCs are a different story. Looks like you spent over $3,700 for that configuration. You could have gotten the same exact specs and arguably a better looking PC from Light Gaming for only $3,165. I mean, just look at the VRMs on the motherboard. The memory also has no heat spreaders on them, it's just the ugly PCB that's exposed. They also put in a 120 millimeter AIO on a 12900KF with only one intake fan and loose cables from the GPU. Why they bother putting a clear side panel on this case is beyond me. Just to be clear, I'm not judging you because you didn't build a custom PC. I'm judging you on your selection of pre-built PCs. I know you're a smart guy, Chris, and that's why it pains me so much to see people like you spend your hard-earned money on such crappy pre-built PCs just for brand loyalty. Don't get me wrong, it's fine to be brand loyal, but only to a certain extent. When there are thousands of dollars involved, I would have done a little bit more research to see what else is out there. And for everyone else that's watching this video, considering on buying an Alienware PC, do not buy an Alienware pre-built PC. You will thank me later. Everything else about the setup is awesome. It really is. I love the custom stuff you did on the wall, the pretty cool wall shelves you added on the left side. I would just fill up a couple of them, that way they don't look so empty. But overall, a very badass gaming and productivity setup. Thank you, Chris, for entering. Practical or functional? Who the hell cares? This setup is out of this world. You know, I thought a single 49 inch ultra wide in vertical mode was absurd, but two of them? Jeez Louise. Okay, let's throw functionality out the window because I'm sure we can all agree that this monitor layout isn't as practical as you think. At this point, it's more for looks than it is for functionality, but you can't deny that this setup looks badass. I did watch his video on the channel, by the way. I know he mentioned that he uses the top parts of the monitor to store apps like Spotify or reference material, which I kind of get, but it's still wasted space no matter how you look at it. And it's not really taken full advantage of. I mean, I have two vertical monitors myself. If I look above any of the vertical monitors, even by like six inches, my neck starts to get uncomfortable. Regardless, if you don't think this setup looks badass or at the very least unique, you're lying to yourself. So this is KJ's multi-purpose setup. He does pretty much everything on here from editing, stock trading, 
weaving out and gaming. It took him a total of four months to complete and I'm just obsessed with the monitor layout. It looks like a spaceship. We got a single 48 inch 4K OLED monitor from Aorus that's sandwiched by two massive Samsung G9s in vertical mode. The main monitor sits on the included stand while both ultrawides are mounted to his custom made 96 inch desk that's made out of wood and steel with built-in cable management features, which we'll take a look at later. He kept the surface of the desk very clean and organized. We got a Logitech G Pro Superlight paired with a custom GMMK Pro keyboard and a nice custom coiled cable going across the desk. I love how KJ took advantage of the spacing between the monitors to make room for his speakers, and he added two Elgato Stream Decks at the edge of both monitors. But look at how he managed the cables from both of them. He made a unique cut in the desk to pass the cable, and this matches the whole space theme so much more than a regular circle cutout. It's the small details like this that really makes this setup stand out as much as it does. Another reason why he's able to keep the surface so clean and organized is because he made dedicated shelves underneath the desk to store his audio gear. On the right side is a DAC and amp for his HD800S headphones, while the other side holds a Scarlett audio interface for his Shure SM7B. He painted that in white, just like I did with mine on the last Dream setup. But he didn't stop there. He painted the boom arm and the monitor mounts as well to stick to the same white theme. He attached two cable racks on both sides of the desk to help route all the cables towards the back through a few solid raceways and into the back of his epic gaming rig that's pushing all these pixels. We got the 12 manager K paired with an ROG Strix 3090 in white with some Strimmer Plus cable extensions and a custom LCD monitor in the back. If he's not gaming on his PC, he's playing on his PS5 that is tucked away on the other side. He attached these acoustic panels on the wall, which also helps contribute to the space theme he was going for. Absolutely phenomenal job with this entire room. The custom work, the attention to detail, the symmetry, cable management, and the fact that you're also a Dragon Ball Z fan is the icing on the cake. These are the type of setups that give me the tingling sensation that I once felt down there seven years ago when I started the show. Congrats on taking home the 52nd seal of approval. Toss an email or hit me up on Discord to claim your one of a kind plaque. Well done. Wrapping up the episode is Tyler's triple monitor gaming and Netflix setup. He's only 14 years old, but my guy is already hustling, building PCs, and working part-time at a water park. Through the side hustle, he was able to save up for two years and build himself his dream gaming setup. We have a single 32 inch curved 240 hertz monitor in the center sandwiched by two additional 24 inch monitors in vertical mode. All three monitors are mounted against the wall right beside his soundbar. Very interesting placement for the soundbar, but wouldn't it make more sense to position it lower closer to the tabletop that way the monitors aren't blocking it? Aside from the soundbar, he does have a pair of Arctis 3 headphones that he keeps underneath the desk. As for peripherals, he's rocking the Velocifier TKL paired with a Viper Ultimate wireless mouse. Other than that, there isn't much on the desk. To be honest, the left side looks a bit empty. It's a little unbalanced compared to what you have on the right side with your UPS and your custom PC. A very unusual AIO placement for sure, but I feel like you managed to pull it off by routing the tubes through the streamers. I hope you realize you didn't have to do it this way. You could have mounted the radiator right side up and nothing bad would happen. Some unusual choices here for sure, but overall a very impressive setup for a 14 year old. Keep up your hustle, my guy, and thanks for sharing this with us. As always, let me know in the comment section which of these setups was your absolute favorite. If you guys want to see more Ultimate Editions back on Setup Wars, let me know by tossing a like. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.